Hello, I'm Alison McLean and I'm the Regional Industrial Officer for Unite the Union with responsibility for the SQE, Scottish Qualifications Authority. So currently we're approaching the last week of the ballot. The ballot closes on the 10th of May and I want to encourage all Unite members at the SQE who haven't yet voted to please do so. Um, and to do quickly. Um, we're now approaching the holiday weekend and I know that the will be out there having a nice time with their family and friends. Um, but please, if you have not voted, take the time to do so. I also want to thank all of our members who have voted up until now. We've been doing a bit of phone banking um, this week where uh, Unite have been contacting our members and I'm pleased to say that um, from the responses we've received, the indications are uh, that the uh, membership is voting strongly in favour of industrial action. So two questions on the ballot paper. Um, are you prepared to take part in strike action? We're encouraging our members to vote yes. And are you prepared to take part in action short of a strike, which would be an overtime ban? And um, again, we would wish our, our members to support that and indications are that they are, they are supporting that. This has been a long dispute. We've been in dispute with the SQE since August of last year. And finally, um, in February, when it became apparent that we were not able to actually get to satisfactory resolution, um, our members sent us a very, very strong message um, that um, they had lost trust and confidence in management and HR. And the key issue and reason as to why they've lost trust and confidence is to do with a reorganisational change programme that has taken place across the SQE, which has seen many of our members either um, displaced and being without roles. Some of them have actually um, been put into roles, but in some circumstances, roles that they don't feel that they are best suited to. Um, some people remain very unhappy, very unsettled. A lot of our members have been sharing their own personal stories and have circulated that around the membership to try to really demonstrate the, the real life effect that the um, impact of chaotic reorganisational change has had um, across our membership. The SQA um, have, despite um, saying that they've agreed processes um, with us, what happened was it became very clear that the processes that we had negotiated in good faith were not actually implemented. And as a result, we've seen um, many members um, lose um, you know, their current role through no fault of their own and many very uncertain about their future and that still remains the case today. Um, the SQE also have no workforce development plan in place, something that Unite the Union has been talking to them about for years and had they had some workforce development plan in place, um, maybe some of the key skills um, that they are now seeing that the members don't have in order for, you know, to allow them to continue to do their jobs we could have actually addressed that um, in, in good time. Um, and that is you know, one of the key things that we're asking the SQE to do in order to try to resolve this dispute is to make sure that in the future, no members have to go through the pain and the anxiety that a lot of members have had to do up until now. So having an effective workforce development plan in place will hopefully um, get us to a far better place in the future. So it's not just about the members that have been impacted now by this current phase of restructuring. It's about trying to protect the future of all our membership across the SQE. We are due to meet the SQE at ECAS again um, on Tuesday the 7th of May, ahead of the ballot closing on the 10th of May. Um, we also had a previous dispute meeting with them on the 10th of April and despite it taking um, from late February um, to mid-April to arrange a meeting, um, the SQE came to that meeting that day and what became very evident to um, the, you know, the, myself and, and the Unite reps that were there was that there still seemed to be a general lack of awareness, um, a general lack of real concern about the situation that we were currently in. And certainly there hadn't been, um, or there was no indication that there had really been any thought had gone into how are we going to actually resolve this dispute. Um, so we walked away that day from ACAS with some um, some soundings, if you like, that um, yeah they understood you know some of the concerns and and the the things that we were asking for in terms of resolving the dispute, but nothing meaningful and nothing that would give us confidence that um, the dispute would be um, resolved. And what we've asked for as part of the resolutions to this dispute is to. Um, make sure that current restructuring um, processes um, continue to be halted and that no further restructuring takes place 
unless and until we have agreed processes and procedures in place with the SQA. And that's about protecting the future workforce and trying to avoid a repeat of the situation that we continually told them um, that you know we would end up in. Um, and despite um, us raising those concerns over a period of time, that's exactly what happened. We have also asked them um, to um, look at um, the outcomes of a collective grievance that our members had raised off the back of it, where the majority, um, 11 out of 12 of the complaints that our members made as part of that collective grievance were acknowledged as failures of the SQA, yet they have never come up with anything, any meaningful plan to address those. We've asked them to come and talk to us about a workforce development plan. Um, we've also asked them to speak to the staff who have been impacted, to ask them what additional training they need, to ask them what support they need. It's becoming evident that even staff who have been lucky enough to be placed in another role do not feel well equipped to do those roles and need upskilling, they need training and they need support. And it all seems like more of the same chaotic management approach. So we've got serious concerns around that. Um, we've also asked for an audit of their internal processes. Um, and lastly, and really importantly, we have asked the SQA for an apology. You know, the hardest word to say is sorry, and it absolutely seems to be the case here. We want the SQA to apologise and to recognise that the way that they have managed this process has had a significant impact on their workforce, uh, so much so that 96% of them have said that they've lost trust and confidence, and that's why we're in this dispute today. So the members, um, the message, my message to the members today would be thank you. Thank you so much for your loyal and tremendous support. We've had a number of meetings. They've been packed out. Members are coming. They're asking the right questions. They're getting behind their trade union. I know it's a really concerning time for members. It's very difficult. We don't want um, ultimately to be calling our members out and taking industrial action. And we're very well aware of the impacts that that could potentially have. Um, on the exam tie and, and young people across Scotland. However, please remember, it is the feelings of management and the continued feelings of management that have led to this. Stick with us. Please vote if you've not already voted. And please vote yes and yes. And thanks for all your support. And that thanks also goes to my Unite reps um, in the workplace who have worked tirelessly on your behalf.